This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Peninsula Regional Medical Center. They're bright, they're colorful, and they're potentially deadly to kids. We're talking about detergent pods, you know those little pods of extra potent detergent created to make your life simpler? And for that, they're great. But unfortunately, thousands of young children think they're candy. And some U.S. Senators want them off the market. How would a kid know the, a little kid know the difference between something that is toxic and something that's sweet until they bite into it? Since these laundry detergent pods went on the market two years ago, studies show one child died and 17,000 others were poisoned after ingesting them. Children like Jill Koziel's eight-month-old daughter. I heard Kate gag and I turned to see the packet drop from her mouth. Kate was intubated after experiencing breathing difficulty, wheezing, gagging and drooling. These packets are not like other detergent. They're far more toxic. Dr. Kyron Quillen represented the American Academy of Pediatrics. We should require child resistant packaging, better labeling, and changing the product ingredients to make laundry detergent pods less toxic. The Detergent Poisoning and Child Safety Act proposed recently would require those changes, but Senator Durbin is calling on the industry to act now. Don't wait. Do it yourself and do it in a hurry because kids' lives are at risk here. The senator points out many household products require child resistant packaging. This measure would give the detergent industry 18 months to do the same with laundry detergent pods. According to reports, two poison centers, nearly 12,000 children ages 5 and younger were exposed to laundry detergent packets last year. Pediatric emergency room physician Dr. Jerry Rose states the injuries are more due to burning of the skin or the lining of the mouth or the covering of the eyes from the very concentrated chemicals. So it's more of a chemical burn that doctors are seeing. Now there have been thousands of tragic cases like this nationwide, including right here on Delmarva. So joining us today to tell us the impact of these detergent pods here on the peninsula is Sarah Evans, who's a nurse practitioner and pediatric hospitalist at Peninsula Regional Medical Center. Thank you so much for joining us. No problem. So you've seen this here locally. Yes, we've seen a couple cases here locally. What, what did you see? So um, personally, I was not involved in the cases, but what we see is um, it depends upon the uh, exposure, how the child gets a hold of the pod and what they do with it, whether do they eat it, do they break it open, it, it does it break open on their skin or do they actually ingest it? Right. And in the worst cases seen, it can cause swelling inside the mouth and the airway and burns inside the airway. Wow. And depending upon how the child ingests it, if they swell it, it, they could, uh, it could cause aspiration pneumonia. And um, that is in the most severe cases and that's when we see the children who have to be intubated and mechanically ventilated. And wow. uh, um, bad, those bad. are the worst cases. Um, so. So really, we want to stress the importance of uh, keeping these out of the reach of children. Now, we're talking about laundry detergent pods. We were seeing video right. of the pods. There's also, uh, I guess, dishwasher right. pods as well. Is there a difference between the two? Um, to date, really, we haven't seen any of these types of symptoms with the detergent pods that go into your dishwasher. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it's the chemical compound that's different in the laundry, but for whatever reason, the laundry pods those chemicals are the ones that are causing these symptoms in the children. So what's happening to the body when, when it's ingested? Well, it all depends on how the exposure happens or right. what the child does, but when they do ingest it, it causes a burn inside the mouth, um, any area of the mouth, depending upon how it pops in their mouth, so it could be in their throat, et cetera, right. however it gets down there, and then it can cause burns and swelling. So that's the, the main concern is the swelling and burning of the airway. And now, how do you treat this? Um, it just depends, like I said, on the severity of the exposure but sometimes in the worst cases steroids um, to help decrease the swelling and the inflammation and um, we manage them with supportive care as far as oxygen what their requirement may be like how much they're wheezing or if they you know their difficulty of breathing we have to assess that when they come in to see what they need. Now a lot of times when children ingest poisoning y you want to induce vomiting but that can actually do more harm. Right. Um, sometimes these children will spontaneously vomit on their own when they do this it just causes them to gag and vomit but we would not want to induce vomiting in this case. No. So long term are there effects that are going to last for a while if this um, happens? More research is needed. Um, this is a very new product to the market in the last few years and um, we would need to actually follow these children over time so somebody would actually need to conduct some more research. Um, to date I'm not aware of any right. severe long-term effects but Doesn't potentially it could be. Exactly. So it just depends on um, how, how um, 
when the child ingests it, how, how sick they are and how, wow. how much it uh, So causes. what advice would you give to parents who use these detergent pods? Um, my advice would be to absolutely have them out of the reach of children where they cannot get them at all and um, just to be very cognizant of what they're doing every, you do laundry every day. So it's a, you know, it's something that they're opening, you know, most days and making sure that that is closed and out of the reach of the child so that they can't get to them because they do look very appealing. Even the packaging looks mm -hmm. appealing because yes. they look like they're in, very a, bright. in a fish bowl yes. and bright yes. and colorful. I could yep. see where a child would, mm -hmm. would want to pick up one of yep. those. So be the adult, be the grown up and take care of it. Absolutely. All right. Thank Sarah you so Evans, much. Thank you so thank much you. for talking no to problem. us today. And if you would like to learn more, just go to our website at WBOC.com. Click on our picture at the top of the page. Well, for all the children celebrating Easter this weekend, Easter eggs will provide lots of scrumptious candy to bite into. Still ahead on Del Marva Life, we'll show you how to make a more traditional Easter egg. Find out the history of Ukrainian eggs and how for one Wicomico County woman creating them is a family tradition. And a little later on, giving high-tech toys for Easter is not a tradition, but it could be. We've got some great Easter basket fillers that will have your kids smiling but won't cause cavities. Del Marva Life, we'll be right back.